Hello, good afternoon. It's a deal for Zal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets. End of day, Monday, the 3rd of July 2016. Okay, let's uh, try and decipher exactly the price action today post lengthy week. Well, it is a lengthy weekend for the US. The US markets are closed today, and the uh, European markets certainly were open. Now, in terms of the close, you had the uh, your FTSE down 0.8%, DAX down 0.7%, and CAC down 0.9%. You had the Asian markets higher overnight. You had the Nikkei up 0.6%, Hang Seng up 1.2%, Shanghai up 1.9%. That's pretty impressive. Okay. In terms of fundamentals, okay, uh, a barrage of fundamentals, folks, a barrage of fundamentals. Why did the European markets trade weak today? Good question. Okay. And the main reason was the banking sector, okay? If I bring up the banking sector and show you, especially the Italian banking sector, we've recently had a rally in European indices in the back of uh, potential capital injection into the banking sector, specifically the um, Italian Italian banking sector. So if I bring up the 60-minute chart and show you, you can see that the banking sector certainly came off today. Okay. Uh, now, that was on the back of uh, potentially Mr. Renzi claiming that he can... Uh, pump uh, excess amount of liquidity up to 40 billion into the Italian banking sector therefore obviously uh, avoiding any potential collapse especially given the fact that yields are, are reaching lower and lower and therefore bank profits are being diminished as well now that was that uh, that theory was certainly um, uh, scorned upon or frowned upon by um, by Miss Merkel stating that uh, fiscal you know, targets must be met and therefore there is and and the rules must be adhered to, and there's no way possible that um, Mr. Ramsey could uh, potentially tackle a use of public funds to uh, help the banks, okay? So be too big to fail is no longer too big to fail, and it must fail. So given the fact that they've already injected so much money into the, the banks, the, uh, the actual profit structure certainly isn't working, especially with Brexit concerns obviously weighing on the banking sector as well, okay? So certainly weakness in the banking stocks today, and that's why you... You can see that uh, the uh, market came off. Now, ACB Villeroy stating that Brexit concerns will trigger inflation and recession in the UK. That certainly didn't help. Uh, also, with regards to this potential uh, uh, Mrs. Leeds, this new leader of the uh, Conservatives or potential new uh, attempting to become a leader, uh, certainly stating that she's going to trigger Article 50 sooner than expected. And again, that brought back Brexit concerns. Okay, US data was weak on Friday, so therefore, obviously, you had a negative reaction from there uk construction pmi certainly came in weaker eu zone confused consumer confidence came in weaker um now miss merkel rejects eu bank rescue rules okay so again as i talked about earlier again that was certainly negative uh the uk or the FTSE was certainly helps in the morning popping above the 6 600 level on the back of uh, mr osborne talking about a potential cut in corporation tax now again miss merkel talked that down saying stating that they must take uh, into account corporation tax rules across the European Union and keep it equal. Okay, fiscal sanctions on Portugal and Spain potentially missing their fiscal targets again. That certainly uh, uh, triggered a uh, move higher in the euro. Okay, given the fact that we have stronger inflation data, so given the fact that the euro is like a uh, uh, a safe haven currency now to a large extent because of the anti QE trade, it triggered uh, triggered a move there. Okay, so again, all those things come into uh, come into play and therefore. You had a, a risk off uh, a factor into the European markets, okay? Mainly the banks. The banks were really the real culprits uh, sending this index lower. Even though the Asian markets were stellar overnight, as you can see here, FTSE banks as well lower, and that's led to the FTSE 100 being lower as well. Okay, now in terms of the German DAX, let's look at the technicals now. Let's see exactly where we are. Okay, daily chart, German DAX at the moment, putting a bearish and golfing candle at 50% resistance, therefore looking to move lower, okay? 60 minute chart of German DAX, we've broken out the bullish channel, so be aware for a potential uh, further sell off. Uh, again, be uh, be cognizant of that fact that we could potentially see further weakness. Okay, now as you can see here, the German DAX certainly is lagging, or the European markets are certainly lagging, so certainly bear that in mind. Okay, uh, in terms of the MDAX as well, certainly weakness you can see here on the daily chart, certainly a bearish engulfing candle at Fib 61, so certainly indicating weakness there. Okay, so certainly looking for weakness. Tech all share again, bearish engulfing candles, certainly indicating weakness. So German DAX certainly put, put, putting in a potential pause and therefore looking for a reversal. The French CAC, let's bring up the daily chart. The French CAC at the moment, bearish engulfing candle again, exhausted at 51%. So again, 
watch out if we can hold 4290 the upper channel or the upper body of the red candle then the bears are still in control if you break above that then obviously you're looking for potential gap fill above and we could certainly see the rally continue so again uh, be nimble okay be nimble a 60 minute chart rising contracting wedge pattern breakout uh, breakdown should I say uh, I held the 200 MA failed bull flag okay looking for a reversal and fill gap below at 4090 potentially could be closed okay so again watch out for that in terms of levels if we do continue to flush then you have 4175 as potential support on the gap okay if we continue to flush on the back of this anti QE rhetoric etc okay obviously Brexit concerns as well still remain how much can QE actually cure that okay so again so take that into consideration okay certainly looking for weakness here in terms of the uh, let's bring up the euro stocks now let's see exactly where the euro stocks are positioned bear with me euro stocks 50 very important index okay here we go so euro stocks 50 looking at the daily chart same formation here uh, fib between 50 to 61 percent resistance certainly held okay on the daily chart 60 minute chart you certainly had a pivot top here at the 200 ma okay approaching to 200 ma uh, bear in mind though you still have the inverted head and shoulders target of 2940 that needs to be met so i wouldn't turn too bearish on the european indices as of yet okay so certainly take that into consideration to we hit a pivot high of 2890 2940 still remains and therefore there is still a leg move a move higher on the european indices uh, to yet to uh, yet to come so again certainly be uh, aware of that 10 minute chart the euro stocks at the moment you are now coming into potential support on the euro stocks are around the 2850 level 2860 certainly has held for now okay so again watch out resistance at 2890 certainly has held on the euro stocks as well so be aware of that okay certainly take that into consideration as well okay so certainly looking for weakness there okay in terms of the FTSE 100 okay that's the the real bellwether that really is the one that dictates the weekly chart at the moment there was resistance here previous support equals resistance is certainly held and that support equals resistance is currently at 6860 6890 sorry that's one of the reasons why i shorted the FTSE now the first short that i held overnight was stopped out and then i reshorted at 6621 I wanted to get another short in, but I never did get the entry. Okay, so again, it, it really is an inside bar, so just bear that in mind. In terms of daily chart, the next real resistance is now seen at um, 6750. So again, don't get too bearish. Okay, we are in no man's land. Okay, I really did rely on fundamentals here to short the FTSE, not technicals. Okay, so again, just be wary of that. Okay, I was relying on fundamentals as opposed to technicals. Okay, now there is a technical zone though here, I have nevertheless at the uh, 6620 zone so again i can certainly bring that into play uh, 60 minute chart we've broken out the bullish channel so again be be wary of the potential downside now folks certainly uh, open to potential further downside so again be wary of that okay folks just be wary we could certainly break down okay certainly certainly break down okay so again something to uh, to really uh, understand okay and uh, take into consideration as well okay so just be aware of that P certainly are open to potentially breaking down okay righty then okay so in terms of uh, the FTSE 160 minute chart breaking down out of the bullish channel 10 minute chart really at the moment it's all about that potential gap fill below at 6480 that certainly you can close on the back of obviously this uh, uh, given the fact Tuesday, I think we have the first potential vote for a conservative leader. Uh, okay, so you can see that we've broken out this bullish channel as well. Certainly looking to break down um, weakness identified in the FTSE. <clears throat> it's quite a stellar rally, nevertheless, <coughs> on the FTSE 100. Okay, none of the support levels really came into play today. Uh, okay, so again, if you do test that up high, then we're looking for that potential zone. The pivot high HNS is 6610 down to uh, 6570. So this mini little HNS folks, watch out for this zone here, HNS. Okay, so HNS target on this uh, mini HNS was 6570 uh, 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 to uh, 6610. So you're looking at a 40 point move. So you're looking at 6530 on the downside and that's exactly what we got, okay? Now you do have horizontal support in this region here. So watch out for that potential support zone. That's one of the reasons why I took the long position on the FTSE before. I'm actually closing for plus 17, so I'm actually out of the uh, long position now. 
but yes keep an eye on that okay so 6530 short squeeze done or should we say long squeeze over on this HS formation and you are looking at potential support at 6520 uh, 6500 and then 6480 they're all the zones that you could potentially close okay righty then uh, in terms of uh, the FTSE that's a good summation okay in terms of where it wants to go the HNS was obviously complete at 6530 okay so watch out for a potential bounce there which we already have done okay uh, again you have this diagonal trend line so I'd please do adhere to that as well uh, you certainly need to observe that again if you break higher then 6570 is the potential next resistance zone okay and watch out for 6480 below in terms of uh, our other uh, sectors let's bring up the commodities uh, let's bring up the chart of oil oil certainly has held resistance at that 49.3 hence the reason why sh my bias was short and as my video explained yesterday if you go to my video yesterday I did explain to you the bias was short and that's exactly what we got we got a sell-off today so uh, let's see how it unfolds okay so um, certainly looking for further weakness potentially uh, on the European indices but for now I'm going to go into a neutral mode uh, and uh, but with regards to the US that's one that I certainly am concerned about uh, US market certainly weak so again looking to potentially short the Nasdaq soon as well uh, let me just give you an insight on the Nasdaq and the S&P I think that's quite important here in terms of understanding the um, the actual European indices and as to why I'm bearish from European indices this morning okay S&P 500 so what can you see there folks on the daily chart S&P 500 has a diagonal key tra tra trend line you have a topping tail and you have the unfilled gap at 2113 okay so you've had quite a stellar move okay and you are now into resistance at around the 2105 okay and therefore if the US market is into resistance you European markets will be into resistance too in terms of the Nasdaq daily chart you have this diagonal trend line that we're in we have an unfilled gap above which is at 4466 very unlikely to close given the fact that Asian markets or European markets certainly won't look under the cost today okay so again watch out so you've got you Nasdaq and S&P into resistance so what do you think will happen with regards to the, uh, the rest of the markets okay so certainly take that into consideration okay I think that's a market wrap then be sure to